talk to you about the false doctrine of Calvinism. This is going to be Calvinism refuted by Scripture. Calvinism is a man-made philosophy depending on fallible human logic which totally ignores many clear scriptures, perverts many, and misuses others. Long before John Calvin's time, the teaching was presented by the Roman Catholic heretic Augustine. Here are some scriptures that soundly refute the errors of the Calvinist tulip. These are the five points of Calvinism. The T stands for total inability. Called in Calvinism total depravity, but actually taught as the total inability of man to choose truth. The Calvinist plays many such word games. The Word of God teaches that God created man with the ability to reason, choose, and receive truth. Ephesians 2 8 For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So salvation is by the grace of God, but it is received through our faith. So we have a part in that, receiving of the gift of God. Romans 10.17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Again, it is our faith that will save us, and, and we have the ability to hear the word of God and to put our faith in it. James 1.21, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and super, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. So there it talks about receiving. We are able to receive the word of God by our choice. Isaiah 1.18, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So, the Lord says that we should reason together with him. Deuteronomy 30.19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you and I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. So there the Lord says to choose life. Why would he say to choose or to receive if man was incapable of doing that? Obviously, man is capable of doing that. Um, Joshua 24:15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods... Which your fathers served that were in, that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Okay, again, choosing. Psalm 119, 30, verse 30, verse 111, verse 173. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. So chosen, taken, chosen. Man obviously has the ability to do these things. John 1.12 But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. 2 Timothy 1.12 I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against this day. Received and committed again um, in those two verses. So now we'll go on to the next part of TULIP, which is the U, and it stands for unconditional election. Calvinism teaches that God selects those who are to be saved without any condition, but the Bible teaches that there is one condition to salvation, faith. 1 Peter 1.12, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. 2 Thessalonians 2.13, God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Okay. So, you know, 1 Peter 1, 2 is talking about obedience. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 is talking about belief. Um, so, it's always, it's our faith that saves us. God doesn't, God didn't just choose who would be saved. Luke 7.50, thy faith has sa hath saved thee. Um, Ephesians 2.8, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Okay. So we are saved through our faith, not because God chose us. And when it speaks about obedience and uh, 
First Peter 1 Peter 1-2, the obedience would be putting your faith in the Lord for salvation. Okay, so the L is limited atonement. Calvinism teaches that Christ died only for the elect, but the Bible teaches that he died for all mankind. The reason not all are saved is because they failed to repent and receive the Savior, not because he didn't provide for their salvation. So, limited atonement means that Christ died only for the elect, which is false. Christ died for everyone. Isaiah 53, 6, All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one his own way, to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. 1 Timothy 4.10 For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. 1 John 2 verse 2 And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. Hebrews 2.9 But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. 1 Timothy 2.4 Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So Christ died for everyone, whether they receive the gift or not. He still died for them. Okay. Uh, so we go to the I. It's irresistible grace. Calvinism teaches that God's grace for salvation cannot be resisted, but the Word of God says it can be resisted. Lamentations three thirty five through thirty six to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High to subvert a man in his cause the Lord approveth not. Okay. So it says to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High to subvert a man in his cause. So there it says it's choosing that he can resist God's grace. Um, Matthew twenty three thirty seven. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth chickens under her wings, and ye would not. John five thirty nine through forty. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me, and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. So they are resisting. Acts 7.51 Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in hearts and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Proverbs 1.24-26 Because I have called, and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but ye have set at naught all my counsel, and none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity, and will mock when your fear cometh. Proverbs 29.1 He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. So it shows a person hardening his neck, resisting. The P in tulip stands for perseverance. The Bible teaches preservation of the saints, not perseverance of the saints. Jude 1, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. Preserved, not, not preser- <laughs> persevered. Preserved, not persevered. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23-24 And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that called you, who also will do it. Again, we see preserved, not persevere. John 10, 27-29 My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Preserved by God. Colossians three three through four. For you are, for you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye appear with Him in glory. We are hid in Christ. We are hid with Christ in God. Preserved. Hebrews seven twenty five. Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by Him, seeing that. He, he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Conclusion Calvinism clearly errs from the teaching of the Word of God on all five points of its tulip. The logical conclusion of Calvinism is that God is an unfair respecter of person who chooses people to salvation not according to any standard that he established, but arbitrarily. This strikes at the love 
and justice of God contradicts the fact that Christ gave his life for all and rejects man's responsibility to choose and love his creator. Proverbs 24:23 It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Acts 10:34 through 35 Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. John 6:28 through 29 What shall we do that we might work the works of God, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. Ephesians 2, eight. For by grace you are saved through faith, faith in that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So Calvinism is certainly a false teaching. I refuted every one of their five points from scripture, from many scriptures, on each point. Um, so Calvinism is false teaching. Thank you for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.